everyone. This is Brad from Board Game Geek. I'm here uh, with uh, David Reed, CEO and co-founder of Meta Arcade. You got it. And we're checking out uh, T Tunnels and Trolls Adventures. Which yes. I believe is out right now. It is. It launched on Thursday here at Gen Con 50. So we're live on the Apple App Store and Google Play with classic Tunnels and Trolls Adventures available completely free to play. And we'll also give you a look at the adventure creator that we plan to come out with in a closed beta that will let anybody make their own adventure and publish it and maybe make money doing so without any technical artistic skills required. Before uh, we happen to looking at the, the game, could you tell us a little, for people that might not be familiar with the Tunnels and Trolls series, kind Absolutely. of some background on that? Yeah, so uh, a lot of people know that the first role-playing game ever published was Dungeons and Dragons. A lot of people do not know the second one ever published was Tunnels and Trolls. And while D&D &D was descended from tabletop wargaming, it had a lot of, in its original edition, complex combat mechanics and movement that, you know, you had to, much like you were playing a Napoleonic Civil War sort of miniatures game. When Ken St. Andre experienced this, he thought, wow, this role-playing game is a great idea, but why did we make it so complicated? And so he set out to make a role-playing game that was more like reading a Marvel comic, where combat was fast and had a lot of action, and characters had interesting dilemmas that they had to go through, and it ended up being a bit more narrative depth as opposed to an emphasis on combat and movement. That led very quickly to the first solo adventures, where for the first time now, gamers could experience a role-playing game even if they weren't with their group of players, and so it became a nice add-on to the sort of stuff I might do at a tabletop with TNT or D&D and such. Games been, was came out originally in 1975, has been continuously published by Flying Buffalo here for over 40 years, and we're now proud to be taking some of these classic adventures onto our platform as our digital remastery of Tunnels and Trolls. Cool. Can we take a look at it? Yes, we can. Thank you. So, if you go into the App Store today or Google Play and you take a look at what you get, um, you'll see six adventures. It's really five plus a tutorial here. And we'll, we'll go into Naked Doom here in a moment as the first one that people who may have seen us at Gen Con last year or were part of the beta over the year would have seen that this was the first adventure we made. Now, quick note on monetization, completely free to play. Okay. Uh, we start you off with an assortment of hearts, as we call them, which are like your quarters at the arcade. They give you a run through. And you can play all of this for free forever as long as you're willing to watch an ad before you start an adventure. We don't interrupt the narrative, we don't put banner ads all over the screen and such, but if you run out of hearts and you don't want to buy any, not a problem, watch an ad, you get another heart, play another adventure. A lot of people here at Gen Con are saying they'd like to just buy them and turn off the ads, no problem. These uh, three mini solos down here are a buck a piece, Buffalo Castle's a few bucks, Naked Doom remains completely free to play, and every week we're gonna add another adventure. So it starts to build up a body where you use the hearts to try these things out and feel out what you got. You will have a persistent character, we'll show you that real quick, where this, your character, as you go through an adventure and you survive, you get loot, you get adventure points, you level up, and you go on to more and more difficult adventures as you go. Okay. And so you, you know, Leilana here apparently survived, well in fact I know this, she just survived an adventure where she got herself a nice great sword. Uh, so we'll be taking that into the adventure with us. Cool. So let's start with Naked Doom. And Naked Doom is an adventure where basically the story is you are a criminal convicted of some unknown offense in the seat of imperial power in this world. And in order to get your freedom, you need to get through this gauntlet of monsters and traps and poisons and such. And if you make it out, you get your freedom. Okay. Most people don't. Uh, in fact, when Ken created this adventure, he, he put in his notes, I will admit this to you now, I'm honestly trying to kill your first level characters and I think I have a good shot of getting them in the first group. So, <laughs> so to that end, what we do recommend when people start with Naked Doom, they pick one of the pre-generated characters. We've made a little more resilient to maybe survive that first room a little better. Um, but here's your moment to moment experience, right? So very kind of choose your own adventure feel in a modern digital retelling. You've got your art, you have your story, you have your choices, you have your persistent character here at the bottom where you pull up your stat bar and things like that. Uh, and since we've given you an introduction, we'll just skip right through it. So, so the adventure begins in this case with two of the Empire's best archers firing poison arrows into your back. And uh, hopefully you can avoid that. So you see the saving roll mechanic is rolling two dice. Okay. It scales up against any attribute. All right, and we got lucky and we both arrows were missed. So part of what you see here is we've started colorizing, digitally coloring some of the art and such. You've avoided that and you've come around the corner and there are three passageways where you can go. And this feels a bit more like the, ooh, which way do I go? The choice of an adventure and the narrative flow and things like that. Any, uh, any preference? <laughs> uh, let's go right. Okay. So uh, we are in the sword room now, and again, in, in the spirit of if you start Naked Doom with a beginning character and you have no equipment, coming into a room like this and seeing two swords in the wall might actually be appealing to try and get one of those weapons. Uh, this particular illustration, Naked Doom came out 40 years ago, 
but the sword room had never been illustrated before. So we commissioned Liz Danforth, who's here in the booth with us now, to create some new art and, and illustrate some of these seminal scenes. So classic art from Liz, but came out last year for the first time in, in the original here. So now here you go. You get a choice. Do you want to try for the hopeless sword or the hero sword, or are you, uh, are you going to avoid either? <laughs> Let's go for the hopeless sword. Here we go. All right, so to get the hopeless sword, you have to roll saving rolls. And what the game does not tell you, you're going to roll a saving roll on all attributes. Okay, here we go. We got doubles. In Tunnels and Trolls, if you get doubles on a saving roll, you add and roll again. So no matter how hard it is, you always have a chance as long as you roll some doubles. And what, what it also doesn't tell you for the Hopeless Sword is that you actually need to fail all six of these saving rolls in order to get it. <laughs> we, did not, we did not fail. No, we did not fail enough of them. Wow, that's a lot of doubles. <laughs> More doubles. All right, so so you didn't get the sword, but you got a big buff at, that the sword gave you, and now you've got to decide, well, do you want to try for the hopeless sword again, or are you going to turn around and go back? I think we'll head back. Right. Good decision. All right. Now, uh, if you want to see a combat in action, why don't we go to the left, and sure. I'll show you what Sounds that looks good. like. So, basically, we uh, are heading into a place where... We can smell it's a rock troll, and uh, I say we just go on and do it. Yeah, let's do it. And so now here's what combat looks like, right? You've got your two opposing forces, dice rolling in from the opposite sides of the screen. Thanks to Leilana's giant greatsword, she's got a very big advantage over the troll. Keep in mind, if you were a, a true beginning character, it wouldn't go quite as easily, right? right? And uh, let's just keep pressing on. We'll get you to uh, one more fun place in here. Sure. So we'll get out of this ca cavern. We'll follow the tunnel out. And so now here we are, we're at this chasm, and we have some choices here about, well, do we want to walk across the bridge, crawl across the bridge, go back to where we came from, or explore the edge of the chasm? Okay. So are these, are these separate choices here? They are indeed. Yeah, the, yeah exactly. The okay. buttons aren't as clear on this oh, because one. because there's four. Okay. Yep. I was just curious if it was a new mechanic. Uh, let's explore the edge. All right. So you come to a giant jade idol of a frog, and there's a ring. I think we have to put it on. I Excellent. Know. So this is great because we Tunnels and Trolls had a lot of mechanics of bringing people between the adventures. And so okay. if you got into trouble in one adventure, you might find yourself in Naked Doom. In this one, you're in Naked Doom, and you could put on this ring and teleport to the Death Trap Equalizer dungeon. Now, okay. we haven't coded that one up yet, so unfortunately the ring doesn't work. But we're very clear that we want to make this happen in the way the classic Tunnels and Trolls adventures did. So now you got a ring. You get to go back, and you get to decide, all right, are we walking across or are we crawling across? And crawling is uh -huh. And in fact, it's not. <laughs> Dang it. So this, for what it's worth, is the number one way new players die, is that if you're not immune to poison when you're crawling across, you get bitten and you fall to your death. No big goal, no big loss. You can just start again with the same character and go. Now... What I thought we'd do real quick is show you the adventure creators. Yeah, I'd love to see that. So this is the tool that we are now using to make these adventures internally, okay. and we plan to bring out in a closed beta in this winter, and you are looking now at the next adventure we are publishing. It's called Stop Thief, it's written by a guy named Michael Stackpole, who is better known as a New York Times bestselling author for his Star Wars novels and graphic novels, has been involved with Battletech and Shadowrun with harebrained schemes, but got his start at Flying Buffalo riding Tunnels and Trolls adventures. Oh, wow. All of his adventures there were set in the city of Gull, which has a big criminal underbelly. And this is an adventure where the magnate who runs a shipping fleet has hired you to investigate why all of his stuff is going missing. So what you see here, each of these boxes is a frame, right? It's like, it's like what you saw on the screen there. And we'll just pick one of these up here and take a look at it. We're basically each frame, you know, you enter in your text, type, type it in, that sort of stuff. You can pick your image. So we've got art here, but you can easily pick a different piece of art from, you know, a few thousand images that we've got. Most of this is from the archive of Tunnels and Trolls over the past 40 years, but we've got some new illustrations. We've started coloring them and such. Okay. Uh, similarly, there's a lot of audio that you can use. So, for example, there's a, uh, a music track. And so, you know, this is... Uh, one of the adventures coming out soon is Arena of Kazan. It's a big gladiator adventure. So you're going to hear the drums, the brass, the vibe of the Colosseum and such. Uh, you know, but all kinds of music tracks that can be used throughout the adventure. Similarly, a lot of ambient tracks. And so, uh, you know, here's another one that's good for Arena is, uh, you know, 
The crowd is not happy with what you just did, but now the crowd is happy with what you just did. Or, you know, you happen to walk into a forest fire or uh, you're out on the ocean. So, you know, that's part of how that, that process works. And then there's just dozens and dozens of sound effects now of, uh, okay, here we go, the army charging and shouting. Uh, you're being attacked by the Balrog. Uh, you're in a bar fight and somebody smashes a bottle over your head. So, you know, just like all this stuff. And for each frame in the adventure, you can pick from the music, the ambient, and the sound effects to add to that. Cool. Now, what I'll show you as well, little thing here. So when we demoed this for the first time at PAX South and we let people just come into the booth and say, hey, do you want to make an adventure here? A lot of people said yes. And we'd say, what do you want to do? And they're like, I don't know. No problem. So what we would do is just go into the images, pick a random one. It's like, oh, okay. What's going on here, right? And okay. suddenly people are writing an adventure. Uh, you find a magical belt buckle <laughs> adorned with many gems and you know in a lot of cases here we'll remove this to show you what it may look like you have the ability to switch a frame which is just pick a path that's the purple lines we saw fight and saving roll are the the indications of a conflict resolution of course, okay. right and so what happens when you pick one of these is it automatically spawns the child frames of success and failure okay. so you don't have to think too much about that as the uh, as the creator. So let's put a saving roll there, and we'll make it on intelligence. And uh, you can't help but take the buckle. It is so shiny. And now you're gonna have to roll a saving roll on intelligence. So a lot of times, you know, if we come back to the map view, like I say. So here's. Here's our new frames that have been created by this. Now, a lot of times, oops, that's not what I want to do. A lot of times in these sorts of things, right, uh, you picked up the frame. Uh, sadly, the buckle was cursed, and you are now dead. <laughs> All right. That's rough. Yeah, a little tough, but, you know, we're just making a simple little thing here. Not the best narrative ever. Put in, uh, we got all kinds of music we can put here, so let's put a... Uh, Let's hear what this sounds like. <laughs> there we go. So that's a, and, and we'll close the adventure here. All right. But if it's successful, so let's give you a bunch of treasure because you got a very valuable buckle. And let's call that the end of our adventure. All right. Tiny little thing. This time it's not due to death, it's successful. Okay. Uh, it's in the bag and I'll just, yeah. I at least want to search for it. I probably should have written some text there, but you'll get the point. And so, let's go ahead and preview this little thing that we just made. Okay. Now, there's a lot of stuff we want to do before we take this thing out for commercialization. I need to get a spell checker in the text edit thing. You saw me fumbling with that a bit. Uh, I'd like to get the preview to go right to the thing you just made as opposed to having to fire up the whole app. But it still works. And... So here's the thing we just made, right? Okay. It's rendered in real time, can be played. We're going to roll our saving roll. And we didn't die. We succeeded. Okay. All right, so we got some gold, we got some adventure points, and we're done. Right? And so it's it's just a, it's that simple to make something, right? Okay. Now, this was not the best narrative or anything that you've ever seen. But the whole point here is, is to give the ability for anybody, whether they're technical or not, to be able to create something, tight and compelling, playable on all these devices, this is how we're building things now for iOS and Android. Okay. And in the, in the coming months, we'll have it out on PC, Mac, and Steam and put this out into closed beta. So people who are interested, and look, we're here at Gen Con 50. Everybody here writes adventures, right? Yeah. All these people who've been writing adventures can now create one and give their hand at trying to publish it. And each time your adventure is played, again, assuming we look at it, you didn't have hate speech and plagiarism in there, yeah. we'll put it out on the app stores for you, and you can earn money every time somebody plays your adventure. That sounds pretty amazing. Uh, so will this system be accessible, the adventure editor, was that available, will it be available on mobile devices as well to use? Yeah, so in there's no reason why you couldn't do it on mobile. Okay. Uh, not sure you'll want to create on a phone, but on a tablet, right? Okay. You know, because yeah. you're seeing the text editing and browsing through these archives. You know, this, we're holding the release of it for when we put the PC Mac build out, okay. because we know that's how most people want to create. We think most people will play on mobile. But yeah, on a tablet, no problem. That you can do. Cool. Well, this sounds really amazing, and it looks like a great uh, 
outlet for creators that want to, you know, both experience stories, but also try some of their own. Absolutely. And people who have, you know, think of all the people here who have written adventures that they played with friends at their table, but have never really shared with anybody else because they haven't been able to. We like to think this is a chance for everybody to try their hand at putting some adventures that they've made, whether now or in their past out there, and just see what people think, get that reaction. So it should be a lot of fun. Cool. Well, thank you so much for showing us. We look Absolutely. forward to checking it out. Well, thank you. Yeah.